This is Rob from All Music and All Bands talking with Greg Jason, bassist from Kings of Dust, Badlands, and Red Dragon Cartel. Thanks for taking the time to conduct this interview with us. No problem. Um, for those unfamiliar with yourself and the bands you've played with, um, would you please give us some backstory? Um, well, the first band that probably anyone would have heard of was a, a band from Arizona called Surgical Steel uh, in the uh, early 80s. And um, the band was big here, and the connection with that band was that Rob Halford was a friend of the band, and he would come out and sing with us. And he, we would play Judas Priest songs uh, when he was around, and he would come out and play on stage with us, which, you know, wasn't that common of an occurrence, uh, probably anywhere. And then I moved to L.A. Uh, I was in Rat for about two months, and I was in a band called Leg Diamond for mm, three or four months for one tour. I did a tour with them. I was in Steeler post Ingve um for about a year and then um i was in a band with joe holmes who was uh david lee roth and uh ozzy's guitar player for a while and then uh i got in badlands um what are you currently doing with kings of leon or kings of dust and are there plans to record a cd we're actually in the process of uh recording one right now but uh it would have been done a while ago, except um, the whole project went on hold when I got cancer, and uh, it's just taken me, you know, a while to get back up to speed to, uh, you know, find the energy and everything else after going through the whole cancer thing. So we're in the process of doing it. It's, uh, it's, the singer is Michael Beck, who was in Red Dragon Cartel for a little while, and uh, uh, him and I had the, have had the band for about five years, and um, we've changed guitar players and drummers um, a handful of times. So we have a drummer named Jimmy Taft that we really like, and one of my favorite drummers, and a guitar player, Todd Iyer. And uh, we're just writing songs and in the process of recording, hopefully be out by the uh, end of the year or the beginning of the year. Um, Badlands was Jakey e. Lee, Eric Singer, and Ray Gillen. What was your experience like playing with them? The best band I was ever in. I mean, uh, it was like a dream band. You know, you, I I was in a band with my favorite guitar player of all time, who is Jake. Ray Gillen, in my humble opinion, was the best singer of his generation. And uh, there was no one that sounded like him. Uh, and Eric Singer's a great drummer. I mean, look at his resume. And then the drummer we had after Eric, uh, Jeff Martin, is also a great drummer. Two, two completely different kinds of drummers, but, um, it was just a great band, great songs. We had a good time on stage. Uh, we did a lot of jamming, so there was a lot of improvisation when we played. And, uh, it really allowed me to kind of, uh, experiment and do whatever I wanted. And, uh, you know, it's a shame that, if uh, Ray if, if Ray was alive, I'm sure him and Jake and I would have uh, probably revisited the Badlands thing at least a couple times. Um, is there any Badlands material that hasn't been released, and will it? Uh, there's a whole bunch of uh, stuff that has not been officially released, and I don't think it ever will, but Jake kind of has control of that. He's the main writer on it. And um, we did, we probably wrote 30 some odd songs for our first album. And uh, obviously only, what, 10 or 11 songs made it. And, but a lot of those songs were us trying, kind of experimenting, trying to find exactly what direction we wanted to write in. I mean, uh, Ray and Eric knew each other prior because they'd both been in Sabbath together, and Jake and I were friends. I auditioned for Ozzy, and that's how I met Jake, and and uh, we had a connection through that, and we always stayed in contact after, you know, I auditioned for Ozzy. So 
the kind of stuff that we wrote for Badlands, really no one else was really writing that way. I mean, there were a lot of bands that were saying they were going to kind of do this 70s blues rock thing, but I really think probably Badlands was the only one that actually stepped to its guns and did it. And so, you know, trying to figure out how that worked and, you know, what influences we wanted to use, uh, you know, how everyone wanted to approach the material. Uh, it was kind of, it took a while to get there. So while there is a, a bunch of other unreleased songs and some of them are on YouTube, someone has managed to find a copy of it. A lot of it doesn't really sound the way that we ended up sounding on that first record, although there is some, uh, a few songs that do, but for the most part, I think it was just us finding our way. And I don't know if, it, if it'll ever be released or not. Wouldn't bother me one way or another. I mean, if it was, that's great. If it doesn't, it, it's it's all fine. Greg, you've also played with Red Dragon Cartel with Jakey Lee. Um, would you please tell us about that time period in your life? Um, that kind of came about. Um, Jake had recorded the Red Dragon Cartel record with um, Ron Mancuso playing bass. And it was done at Ron Mancuso's studio. And uh, so kind of the caveat to use Ron's studio was that he would get to play bass on it. And Ron's a guitar player. He's not a bass player. So he played bass on the record. And he didn't play on all of it. I know he played on some of it. And then um, some other bass player, Tom Peterson, played on some of it. Um, uh I can't remember all the other bass players they used. I know Jake played bass on some of it. But when the record came out, they were touring, and Jake wasn't happy with the way that the bass playing was uh, coming across on stage live. So he called me up and just said, uh, hey, we're going to be playing in Tempe, Arizona, which is right near where I live. He said, uh, but we're not going to bring Ron. Would you like to play bass at this show? And I said, uh... Sure, why not? And I hadn't played with Jake since the 90s. You know, uh, since the end of Badlands, we hadn't really played together. And so uh, we rehearsed for a couple of days at my friend Michael Beck's studio, and, and Jake came in. And I'd never met Jonas, the drummer, and I'd never met Darren, the singer. Came in, and we jammed. Jake just started a riff, and we jammed for about 45 minutes on multiple riffs, all within this one riff and different time signatures. And uh, when we got done, Jake told me, he said, this is what we've been missing. You know, the, my my approach to the, the way the bass is has always been kind of what Jake likes. So we did the show, and it was a really good show. And uh, after the show, they asked me if I would join the band. And I said, I can't join. They were, going, they were on tour. And they wanted me to go with them right then. And I said, I can't. I have commitments till August if you still aren't happy with your bass player in August or haven't found someone else, give me a call and, and I'll do it. So he called me in August and said, we still want you to do it. So I rehearsed for a couple of weeks and we went out on the road for about, I don't know, six or seven, eight weeks, something like that. And uh, it was a great time, great band. I enjoyed playing with Jake again. Uh, I liked the Red Dragon Cartel songs. Of course, we played a lot of Badland songs as well. And we uh, also did uh, some Aussie songs. And uh, we were received real well. The reception was great. Um, and uh, we were getting ready to go back on the road in uh, April of uh, 2015. And uh, around that time, I was diagnosed with cancer. So I had to leave. Because I was going to have to have, I had stage four cancer, so I couldn't mess around with it. So I had to go right into treatment. I had to have some surgery and then have multiple weeks of chemo and radiation. So, you know, they got another bass player and uh, they made a new record. And they're going to be, I think the record comes out this fall. And I'm sure it'll be great. And, uh, but as far as my experience with the band, I, I had a great time. I would do it again in a heartbeat. You know, I'd play with Jake anytime. So it's, uh, it was a great experience. In 1984, you released a solo CD, It's About Time. Are there any plans of doing another one? Um, actually, I think I released that in 94. Yeah. Um, yeah. And 
No. Uh, not, I don't have anything like on the back burner. We, the solo CD was actually a lot of work because I had to, you know, I kind of was in charge of everything. And, uh, I mean, the cool part is it was, you know, getting to do the record with Eric. I think Eric's a great drummer and we were great friends at the time. And the guitar player that played on it is the guy that got me into being a musician in the seventies. So it was cool. And, uh, I liked the record and I'm not that crazy about my singing voice, but I think if I was going to do something else, I would do it under a, a band setting, kind of like Kings of Dust, you know, that in a way that's kind of my, it almost is like a solo record in a way, except I don't write the, the lyrics and the melody lines. But I have a big hand in writing the music, and I actually like a band setting. I, I'm real comfortable in a band sort of experience, you know, where everyone has some say and all that kind of thing. The solo record, you know, Eric was in Kiss at the time, so obviously he wasn't going to be, you know, leaving Kiss to go do some shows with me. And if I had ever done any shows, I never did. But uh, if I did anything again, it would be in a band setting. Um, if you were to do it in a band setting, uh, what musicians would you like to get involved? Uh, well, I, I like the guys that I have in Kings of Dust. I mean, it's a great band. I mean, but, it, you know, if I had my druthers, you know, uh, if I was going to do something besides Kings of, Kings of Dust, I would want to play with Jake again. Um, he's my favorite guitar player ever. He's the best guitar player I've ever seen. Um, I would probably be interested in playing with Brian Tishy on drums. He's one of my favorite drummers. I've done a couple of records with him. He's a super nice guy, very talented guy. Uh, him and I play well together. And I'm not even sure, uh, from a vocal standpoint who I would want to use. I'm, I, uh, I'm sure there's a lot of great singers out there. I, uh, I like Darren, the guy that sang in Red Dragon Cartel or sings in Red Dragon Cartel. I think Darren's a great singer. Um, there might be some other singers. I like Robert Mason, the guy that sings in Warrant, and I think he's with Inch Mob uh, for some shows as well. Robert and I are old friends, and we're really good friends, and I have a lot of respect for what he does. I like Oni Logan. I think he's a great singer. And uh, Michael Beck, the guy that sings in My Kings of Dust, I, I like his voice. So there's a number of options there, but um, I can't. I haven't really thought about it in that, uh, you know, I haven't really given it that much thought that way. But, uh, you know, maybe someday. Uh, the joke between Jake and I is that we would always, uh, we wanted to be uh, hooked up at the same old folks' home so we could have two rocking chairs sitting next to each other and we could just sit there and play blues. <laughs> so maybe that'll be it. It'll be just, you know the Jake and Greg rocking chair tour and it'll just be him and I and and he'll just start a riff and, I, and I'll play a riff behind him and we'll keep the drum beat by me stomping my feet. <laughs> um, who have been your influences uh, throughout your years? Um, my influences on the bass are all, you know, uh, late 60s, 70s sort of guys because that's when I, I started playing in 71. So, I mean, I could give you a, a whole list of guys. Tim, uh, uh, John Entwistle from The Who is my main influence. Felix Papillardi from Mountain, another huge influence. Tim Bogert from Cactus. Um, Jimmy Randall from Jojo Gunn. Rob Grange, who played in Ted Nugent. Uh, Greg Ridley from Humble Pie. Humble Pie is my all-time favorite band, so very influenced by him. Andy Fraser from Free. Uh, on and on. I mean, I could give you 25 guys here. I don't think that's what anyone wants to hear. But back when I uh, started playing the bass, you know, bass players were like pretty musical and they, you know, they really added a lot of stuff, you know, kind of like what you hear with John Paul Jones, another influence of mine from Zeppelin. You know, there's a moving bass line that we through all that music. It kind of ties it together and counter counter uh has some counter melody counterpoint to it same with what entwistle does with the who or a lot of those kind of guys and so my style of bass playing is very uh reminiscent of those kind of guys it's very 70s influenced um a lot of guys in the 80s accused me of being a lead bass player and when i 
think of lead bass players, I'm thinking of a guy that like does a solo on the bass, and I'm not. Uh, well, I can solo on the bass. That's not my main impetus behind what I do. So I just kind of a melodic musical bass player that kind of weaves my part through the rest of the music and hopefully adds to it. You know, and when I got in Badlands, that's the thing that Jake liked is that you know he could say, you know, I'm kind of looking for a grand funk feel here, which is Mel Shacker or Shocker, one of my favorite bass players as well. You know, I, I hear this really kind of grand funk sort of thing going on. Well, I knew exactly what he was talking about, and then I could do it, or he would say the same. I want to hear something kind of like what Glenn Hughes would do in Trapeze or what Felix Papillardi would do in Mountain. Can you do something like that? And because my influences were all based on that, I would uh, be able to do that. Plus, Badlands was like the greatest cover band ever. Our 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 sound checks, we never played our own material. Uh, we just played all cover songs, but they were all obscure cover songs. So there's nothing that Jake couldn't come up with that me and Jeff or me or, and uh, Eric couldn't. We already all knew. We knew all the material, but we all knew the same material. It was like a lot of fun. So, But that's where my influences come from. With all the groups you've performed with, uh, which ones would you say have been your favorites? Uh, well, well, at the top of my list, obviously, it's going to be Badlands and uh, Red Dragon Cartel, which is probably as close to a Badlands reunion as there's been so far. And uh, so those would be the two top uh, things I've done. I had a, I did a tour with Legs Diamond. Um, that was a lot of fun. And, uh, when I first moved to LA, I got in Steeler with Ron Keel and it was a huge LA band. I mean, we played, we headlined everywhere we played and did a lot of, uh, a lot of shows at a lot of really cool places in LA. And, you know, I'm from Arizona and, you know, to go to LA and be living there and playing in all the best places at the country club and Perkins Palace and, you know, the whiskey and all those kind of places that, you know, you've heard of and Santa Monica Civic and all that, uh, was pretty fun. And it was a good band and, uh, we didn't get a record deal. It meant he eventually got a record deal as Keel. But that was a lot of fun to be in that band. And actually Surgical Steel was a lot of fun, uh, to be in. Um, I I usually have a pretty good time with just about anyone I play with as far as original. I mean, I could I can probably find something positive to say about just about anything. Uh I had a band in the 70s that we wrote our own material and we did play a lot of covers called Ghost Rows and we played at desert parties. So someone would build a stage out in the side of a hill and they'd get a couple of generators and then they someone would bring 25 kegs and they'd set it on the back of a truck and they'd charge you to go through the gate and be one road in and one road out. They'd charge you five bucks a car load and people would come in and we would play these desert parties that would have two, three, four thousand people at them. And, uh, you know, we all wanted to be famous rock stars. And actually Jeff Martin was in that band with me as a drummer. And, uh, you know, we all thought we were going to make it big and yeah, we're going to, we're going to be, we're going to be huge. And we kind of approached those desert parties the same way. So those were always fun. So I I have a pretty good time no matter what I do. What is your favorite CD from your catalog of material? Um, Dusk, the third Badlands album. Um, the third Badlands. Great, go ahead. I'm just kind of thinking about the CDs I've made. And, I mean, I like my my solo CD. I like uh, all the Badlands stuff is cool. Um, um, I did a, a, a some CDs for a band called Blindside Blues Band. Um, I really enjoyed the first one that I did with them, which was Jeff Martin and I uh, played with a rhythm section on it. So that was a good record. Um, and I, think that, I can't think of anything that other than that stuff. I mean, I like everything I've done. 
for the most part. I did a record called Red Sea, or a band called Red Sea, with Jeff Martin again. And that was a fun record to make, and, and I liked some of the material. And usually some of the stuff I've co-written songs on some of those records, and I like that stuff. That gives you another reason to like it, I guess. Um, no disrespect to, to Ray uh, Gillen, um, but is there any chance for a one-off Badlands reunion? Well, never say never, but I can't. Uh, and Jake and I, I would lie if I hadn't said he and I had discussed the possibility of doing it because we have uh, not le not recently. And Jake's going to have his hands full with Red Dragon Cartel for the next. I don't know how I don't know how long that band will keep going, but say for the next couple years for sure. Um, we talked about doing it. I don't think we would use Jeff or Eric on drums. Um, there's some history there, which probably would prevent that from happening. Um, but again, never say never. It could happen. I'd play with either one of them, and, and maybe Jake would too, but I just don't know. As far as the singer, like I said, there's guys I like and names that have come up. And like I said, I think Darren, the guy that sings with with Red Dragon now, you know, we did quite a bit of Badlands songs when I was in the band, and I think they probably still do. I thought he did a pretty fair representation of what Ray did. And even Darren would tell you that, you know, he's not Ray. Ray had something that no one else, he had a tone of his voice that I'd never heard anyone else actually do what Ray did. So, um, but... If Jake called me and said, hey, I'm going to use this singer, and we're going to get this guy, we're going to go out and do nothing but Badlands stuff, and we're going to call it Badlands at the end, I'd say, yeah, sure. I'd be into it. Um, what other interests do you have outside of music? I run a music store here, a big guitar store in Phoenix called Bazaar Guitar and Drum. I manage it. And I've been doing that the last almost three years, um, and I enjoy that job. The owner of the store, uh, my friend Susan Alexander, um, she lives in North Carolina. She kind of gives me free reign to kind of uh, manage the store, do whatever I see fit, and it works good. It's successful. And I get a lot of people that uh, – a lot of people I know on Facebook who, you know, are – for lack of a better word, fans of mine, friends of mine, and they'll, when they're in town, they'll come in and say hi, and they'll come in and buy something. So I, it allows me to be kind of in the public eye a little bit. So that's fun. I coach baseball uh, and teach baseball. Um, my son, who is 26, coaches a team of high school juniors for an organization called AZ Pro, and it's uh, basically like a for players that are trying to go into college and I go out and help him coach every now and then I've actually coached in college and uh, so it allows me to be out there uh, with you know some good ball players high school age ball players and uh, to help them further their game so I enjoy that um, and I teach baseball and, and softball I teach hitting so um, I have X amount of students anywhere from age 7 to age 22, 23 that will come by and get game lessons from me. So I'm a, I've am always been a baseball guy. So I uh, enjoy that part of my life. And someday, if I'm not managing this store someday, if I'm not on, the, on tour with the newly reformed Badlands, um, if that ever happens, um, I would probably just go back to teaching baseball full-time. I enjoy it. And I have a bunch of other crazy interests. I, my daughter and I golf. I have a 19-year-old daughter, so me and her and my wife will go golfing. And uh, you know, I have a, I have I'm interested in cars and Harleys and all that, you know, all that kind of crap. So I stay busy. Um, what have been the highlights of your musical career? Um. Well, I mean, again, to go back to Badlands, I mean. That would be the highlight of it, um, to be in a band with the musicianship of that caliber. Um, 
it was like a one once in a lifetime experience. You know, people will ask me sometimes because Badlands wasn't you know super successful. We were like a mid level band. We're popular with the musicians, but people will say, "Well, would you rather been in if you had a choice of being in Motley Crue uh, or Badlands? Which one would you have preferred to be in? You know, because Motley Crue made you know millions of dollars, and I still would have rather been in Badlands just because." Uh, it was never about the money for me. It was about the musicianship and the, uh, not that Motley Crue is a good band. I don't get me wrong. Um, but I'm just saying for the style of music that Badlands played really suited the style of bass that I play. And so, um, when I was in other bands in LA before Badlands, sometimes they'd say, um, uh, well, uh, that's a really cool bass line. Were you planning on playing that in the song? And I would say yes. And they'd say, well, we want something simpler. We, could you just kind of like pedal on the E and A there? And I'd say, no, no, I can't, but thanks for asking. And then I'd usually leave. So in the eighties, that style of my style of bass wasn't exactly the most popular style. They wanted something a lot simpler. And when I got in Badlands, he didn't want any, Jake didn't want something simpler. He wanted something like the 70s, something musical, something inventive, something creative. So that made me happy. Playing style, that style made me happy. So, you know, Badlands would have been a highlight for sure. Uh, some of the shows we did, getting to go to Japan with them, you know, getting, you know, I had a number of endorsements back in the day. You know, having people give you free gear was pretty cool. Uh, Red Dragon Cartel was cool. A highlight as well because I hadn't played in that setting in a long time and um my son and daughter had seen me play but just in like local cover band sort of thing they'd never seen me in a kind of a national kind of setting so when we played um they came we played the whiskey we and uh, we played a sold out show at the whiskey and I know that's not the Coliseum or anything but my kids got to come and they got to see you know 500 screaming people, you know, getting off on, you know, that band. And then the same thing when we played in Vegas and San Diego. So my family got to, my kids got to see that. And uh, that was kind of uh, one of the reasons I, we, what, one of the reasons I was interested in doing Red Drag Cartels because I wanted my kids to be able to see me in that setting. And of course, just the opportunity to play with Jake again. Uh, he's the perfect, perfect musical partner for me. So, um, that would probably have to be the highlight. Um, is there anything that I haven't mentioned that you would like to talk about? Um, I don't know. Is there any other questions you want to ask me that I didn't uh, answer yet? <laughs> I don't know. What, what do you got in mind? No, that's pretty much it. Um, I'll just say that... Uh, I appreciate the uh chance to still be marginally relevant as a musician. Um Red Dragon Cartel brought that gave me the opportunity for that again. When I was in Badlands, you know, we were pretty popular, you know, in magazines and all that, but uh social network wasn't around then. And when I got in Red Dragon Cartel, you know, all of a sudden, you know, there's Facebook and everyone has a computer on their phone and a camera on their phone and all the photos and all the people you get to meet and all that. So I appreciate the opportunity to still be that way and all the people that I've got to meet uh, that were uh, Badlands fans, but I met them at Red Dragon Cartel or that I've met through Facebook. Most of the people I know on Facebook I've never met, but I gotten the opportunity to um, uh, be friends with a lot of really nice people. And um, the reason I'm mentioning that is because when I had cancer uh, in 2015, I was given eight months to live. And uh, so my wife posted something on Facebook that, hey, you know, this is Greg's wife. He's got cancer. Um, and the reason I did it is because I didn't want it to get on Blabbermouth or Sleaze Rocks or somewhere and someone to give some wrong information. So I wanted control over here's what's wrong with me 
and here's what the prognosis is and here's what the deal. Well, what surprised me is that I got like 3,500 private messages from people and, and uh, posts on that saying how they were you know, praying for me, supporting me, uh, that they loved me. And I was so taken off guard that people could, that you've never met, or that I've never met, could give you that kind of uh, support and out an outpouring of love and, and uh, I I was like stunned by that and it's really helped me to kind of carry to with you know it's been three years since I was diagnosed with cancer so I, obviously I live longer than eight months and my, I'm in remission my prognosis is good and um, and I'm just appreciative to be able to kind of know all these people so all I will say is to anyone that's listening is Thanks a lot, everyone. I appreciate it. Well, thank you, Greg, for taking the time to conduct this interview. And for people that have not seen Kings of Dust, I highly recommend you go out, check them out. It's guaranteed to be a great time. Well, I appreciate that. And uh, I'm looking forward to finally getting that thing moving in the direction that I originally <laughs> had wanted it to five years ago. <laughs> <laughs> well, cool, man. I appreciate it. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. All righty. Uh, hopefully this turns out the way that you wanted it. Oh, it definitely did. Thank you again. Cool. Send me a link. I will. Take All it right. easy. Thanks, Robert. Oh, you're welcome. Bye-bye.